Yep. A timeline of the video of all of his crazy, all of their crazy actions. We need to talk about Ezra Miller because they're being a. Bro, I don't like that. Bro, I, I swear to God, this is the only thing that's going to convince me to get a fucking haircut, low key. Like. <laughs> accused of kidnapping someone drugging them and now they're running from the law and it's all getting way out of hand ezra miller is a 29 year old actor who identifies as they them they've been featured in films like after school the perks of being a wallflower and of course the flash Ezra is a very particular person and honestly, not my type. I mean, I saw some footage of them getting arrested in Hawaii and the way they behave is very much privileged status. I'm not transgender, non-binary. I don't want to be searched by a man. I get assaulted. What? Oh, this is what I saw. This is the clip that like people were talking about where they were like, yo, um, you know, they, they, they thought that this was like a shield arrested in Hawaii and the way they behave is very much privileged status. I'm not transgender non-binary. I don't want to be searched by a man. I get assaulted for NFT crypto art. What's your name? What's your badge number? Tell me your name and your badge number. White key. Ezra. Full name. Full badge number. Control. My ninth amendment rights to not be unlawfully. Oh my God. They're like a fucking sovereign citizen, bro. Straight libertarian, Ezra off the perk. Turns out, it's not that they have, like, very obvious mental health complications happening. They're just a libertarian. Everything just, everything, everything makes sense now, okay? Uh, the, the whole, like, fucking spouting random uh, uh, amendments, okay? The, the, the grooming... Like, all of this makes so much sense when you realize, like, no, like, Ezra is just straight up a fucking they-them libertarian. Living on a, on a farm, homesteading, incredibly libertarian LARPing shit, okay? Uh, multiple guns, allowing babies to, like, play around and eat a bullet. Incredible libertarian shit. That's just it. They're an uncle. Every libertarian is one, of course. Persecuted. Bro, being a hateful pedophile predator is not the same as having mental health complications. I mean, there's all that. That's why, yes, that's why I'm saying it's not just the mental health complications. They are a libertarian, which is, of course, uh, untreatable, unfortunately. Um, yeah. For a crime of no designation. This is the kind of person who believes that they're above the law and that they can do whatever they want. Actually, Ezra's Instagram was recently deleted because they were posting pictures mocking the police because the police are on the hunt for them and cannot locate them. Let's start off by talking about Ezra's relationship to Takata. They met when she was only 12 years old and supposedly Ezra has been grooming her for about six years. So Ezra has a farm in Vermont which has 95 acres and supposedly on this property they've been up to no good by drugging people and housing a cult-like lifestyle. Multiple witness reports state that Ezra is allegedly supplying illegal mind-altering drugs to teenagers at their Vermont farm, committing extreme- I was like, who the fuck are you guys talking about? Then I realized, I was like, is that gay mischief? <laughs> Yo! Yassified Mizkiff, dude. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Yaskiff. Acts of physical and psychological abuse and claiming that they are the second coming of Jesus in a cult-like manner. Bro, these dudes are so whack. Like, they always got the same shit going on. You know what I mean? Like, the cult leader shtick is so played out. Like, get a new one. Get a new shtick. Get a new shtick. It's like Jared Leto and, and uh, uh, Ezra Miller doing the same exact bullshit. So Ezra is being accused of some serious things and nobody can seem to find them. But Takata's parents really care about her and want her to be safe. And they understand how dangerous this person 
is because they've known them for years. Here's a photo of Dakota with Ezra in their home, and there's her father who goes by Chase Iron Eyes. One of the reasons why Chase Iron Eyes has been so public about the situation with his daughter is because they've tried to legally serve them and figure this out, but they keep moving around. He was quoted saying, they move around so much that we're stuck in this legal limbo situation and we can't serve them any place they're in long enough. So let's go ahead and talk about how Ezra got so close to Dakota at such a young age. So Dakota's parents claimed that they allowed Ezra to fly out some tribal members to see the Fantastic Beast premiere in 2017 in London. At this point, Ezra tried to sleep in the same bed as Dakota she was 14 years old at the time. In the legal petition, they write that Ezra uses violence, intimidation, threat of violence, fear, paranoia, delusions, and drugs. Why are you guys throwing up hugs? We already covered this. I just covered this. I literally just covered this. To hold sway over young adolescent Dakota. They really started to grow close in 2017 when Dakota was 14 years old. But her parents claimed that the grooming did start when she was 12 in 2016 because they met each other at Standing Rock during a a protest. That's where Ezra actually invited this family to come and see the premiere of this movie in London. Dakota's parents also shared that they learned that she was drinking with Ezra because Dakota actually told them that Ezra started taking her out to these bars when she was only 14 years old. When Dakota was 16 years old, Ezra convinced their parents to let them attend a private school in Massachusetts about an hour away from Ezra's farm. Dakota's parents saw this as an excellent opportunity for their daughter to pursue their dreams while getting a proper education, and Ezra would be Dakota's mentor. Ezra lied and pretended that they would pay for Dakota's tuition through an altruistic uh, organization, through some charity or something, but Ezra wasn't even affiliated with them. Later, Ezra would allegedly use this against Dakota to instill a sense of indebtedness. As I mentioned earlier, Ezra goes by they and them. When it comes to Dakota, I see some people go back and forth between she and her and they and them. At one point, they did identify as they and them, but then she switched it to she and her after being with Ezra. So it's kind of up in the air, but the parents refer to her as their daughter. So I'm just trying to I'm really trying my best. I just don't want to offend anyone. Now let's talk about Ezra's drug of choice because it looks like it's ketamine, which if you guys don't know what that is, it's a drug that I believe it's like horse tranquilizer that like slows you down and everything. Not too familiar with it, but it can be helpful and dude. Never mind. Essay crimes because the person can pretty much tranquilize the other person and take advantage of them. Dakota's father claims that they know personally that Ezra was using this drug and that you could pretty much smell it on them. Another story that Dakota's father told about Ezra was once they were taking a photo together and he, I guess Ezra had a big jacket on and decided to pull out a gun in the middle of it. In the middle of taking this photo, just randomly decided to pull out a gun. At this point, they were just getting to know Ezra and this made Dakota's father very uncomfortable. They actually claimed that they would not have invited Ezra into the home if they knew that they had a gun. And they believe that Ezra is extremely violent. You learn it? Did you want to fight? Is that the deal? But Dakota isn't this is just straight up libertarian victim, behavior. And other people have been through. speaking out. Actually, it turns out that Chase Iron Eyes, so Dakota's father, and Ezra went to Oakland, California. They also had two other young women, Stella Marbles and Mia Solange. Mia, which we're going to talk a little bit about Mia right now, because Mia actually posted about Ezra in April 2022. Mia posted a TikTok captioned, you took everything from me. Ezra Miller is not a good human, and I can finally say so without being terrified. Hashtag abuser. Since Mia came out with their story, there have been a ton of evidence released, including photos of bruises and messages where Ezra would physically harm and threaten these people on the daily. Mia has shared a TikTok that went viral, but then made their page private, so I can't really access it. It doesn't actually have any words, it just has pictures in that, um, that caption we already read. But they have spoken out again, and I'm going to share a few clips of them speaking about their experience. 
I also wanted to clarify that I did not post this video to gain like sympathy. I did not post this video because I was trying to prove anything to anybody. I posted that video for myself. DC lawyers and DC executives are like this the entire time. They're like, is there enough evidence still? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. We got a franchise that we built. Come on. And I posted that video because for so long I was so, so scared <laughs> to say anything or to bring awareness to what was going on. And, you know, the easiest way for me to do that was in the form of that trend of which I made that video in. And it felt like the safest way to do it for me. Um, so yeah, just clarity on that. Also, I've had a lot Emma doing, Emma doing the fucking, uh, thing, doing it, doing his, uh, Google Earth thing. A lot of people in my DMs telling me that they've been in similar situations with Flexing GeoGuessr. And I'm trying to figure out what the next steps are. I'm also trying to figure out how I can reach out to these people. Because, you know, there is, there is more bang for your buck in numbers. And if I can get, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just hoping we could do something about this because I'm tired of them, Ezra. That was a lot. So now let's go back to Dakota and let's go to this year, January 25th, 2022, and talk about what Dakota went through with Ezra. So while in New York, Ezra drugged part was Dakota crazy with too. LSD and they went into an incapacitated state. They went back to the farm in Vermont and Dakota's condition got worse and worse. Their mental state was deteriorating. The condition got so bad that Ezra and their house guests decided to call Dakota's parents on Saturday the 29th. So four days later, what the hell? During this time, Dakota wasn't eating, wasn't sleeping, and Ezra was on Instagram complaining about the gang 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 and stuff, which of course we don't like the gang gang gang, but like he, he went viral for that. So just like a time reference and Dakota wasn't doing well. They had bruises on their arms when they were picked up. Uh, her mother, actually Sarah Jumping Ingle, took that photo in the car when they picked her up from the farm. What's crazy about Ezra is that once Dakota left, Ezra started texting her mother, Sarah, and was like, hey, uh, you wanna bring her back? I'll have a, a, a team come out 24 seven, have a mental health team. We'll keep Dakota here. Just like wanted to have Dakota under their control at all times, which is like major grooming. According to the Order of Protection, in early February 2022, Ezra broke into Dakota's friend's house and stole Dakota's computer, passport, driver's license, keys, and cell phone. Dakota spent three weeks detoxifying from the drugs that they consumed, and they did a bunch of healing powers and ceremonies and things like this because like, she was going through it. Dakota told her parents that Ezra was using ketamine and that Dakota was deeply impacted, listen to this, deeply impacted by Ezra Miller's voodoo priest, who they had, I guess, an association with in New Orleans. Dakota expressed that Ezra told them that they, Ezra, had been R-worded when they were 14 years old. When Dakota's mother asked them about the bruises on their body and face, Dakota stated that they would not answer Ezra, so Ezra held them down and kept hollering at them. Another friend had to intervene to get Ezra off of Dakota. So Dakota's parents were there for them. They tried to help them. They actually went and helped them get a new license, a passport, and all that. And Bro, why does he keep saying her name like that? I don't know, maybe because he said it wrong. Heads up that Tokata Iron Eyes is pronounced Tokata, not Tokoda. Okay? Like, they, they got it wrong. He got it wrong. Okay? He admits that he got it wrong. How are you looking at a situation where this dude is actually doing a pretty good fucking breakdown of, like, all of the horrific things that Ezra Miller has done, and the only thing you can hyper-focus on is, like, the name is wrong. Uh, like, he, he's getting the name wrong. I actually don't... I, I really don't get it. Like, I, I really don't understand how you can be this person. I, I really don't get it. 
And then Dakota actually lied to their parents and told them, I'm going to go to New York and visit a friend. But in reality, Ezra met up and picked up Dakota and they were on their way back on this roller coaster all again. over Holy again, fuck. which you can't blame Dakota because she's been getting groomed since she was 12 years old by Ezra. Now, moving on to May 27th, Dakota's parents found their approximate location within Los Angeles, and they were informed that they were walking around like zombies, that um, they were bruised and scuffed, and that they didn't have their phones. Ezra was not allowing Dakota to eat. Dakota's friend also described having to ask Ezra's permission for Dakota to go out for dinner. Now, this is where it gets interesting because on May 29th, Sarah and Chase, both of Dakota's parents, went to the home where they believed they were all staying. And they they were. They knocked on the door and this girl named Rosie answered. And they were like, hey, have you seen my daughter, Dakota? Well, Rosie looks over at Ezra and then Ezra's like, Sarah, we're not doing this right now. Sarah is the name of Dakota's mother. And then Dakota appeared and was super happy to see her parents, but then were mad because at this point, Dakota's parents have been legally trying to get a hold of her but uh so she quickly was like hey mom like excited to see you but why are you serving me these orders like why do you keep doing this blah 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 well about 15 minutes after they like were talking and all this the three of them fled the scene. Dakota's parents call the police, and before they arrive, Ezra whispered something to Dakota and Rosie, and they started walking quickly down the road, probably trying to get them to escape. Sarah kept up with them. At one point, Dakota was limping due to the shoes they were wearing, stating they had blisters on their feet. Ezra then whispered again in Dakota's ear, and they began running away from Sarah, the mother. Dakota actually pulled out a knife and threatened the mother to hurt her, what the hell? But Sarah wasn't giving up and kept running up behind them. Ezra made physical contact with Sarah as Dakota and Rosie were getting into an Uber. So Ezra had this plan. I'll call Uber down the street. You run there. You get there. Get in the car and go. Sarah reached inside for Dakota, attempting to talk to them when Ezra slammed the car door and Sarah on Sarah's arms several times. You guys can see some of the bruising right here on Sarah's arms. And Ezra advised Dakota and Rosie that they would meet them there wherever there would be. And the bruising looks like it hurts. Like, that looks painful. And since then, the parents haven't really had much luck. Dakota does have an Instagram, and supposedly they shared a statement claiming that they're totally all right and their family's pushing a false narrative. Here's their post, and pretty much they share that, like, I'm doing fine, and Ezra has been there for me during a dark time in my life. She mentions not needing a conservatorship, which I was- Bro, I thought you, they just like to punch people in Hawaii. There's so much more. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I hadn't covered this for a while, but, like, it, it really built up. So that's why, like, when this new stuff came out- Um- when this new stuff came out, I'm surprised that you thought, uh, you, you just like did not know at all. I was like, I didn't know conservatorship was a situation, but I mean, okay. Um, my father and his allegations hold no weight and are frankly transphobic and based in the notion that I am somehow incapable of my own thought. I am an adult and I deserve to feel authority in my own body. I am tired of wondering whether the cops will show up to me on a daily basis. So I get where she's coming from there. But she's calling this betrayal and that her parents are toxic. And at the same time, you have to look at what Dakota's gone through, drugged and physically harmed and all of this. Clearly, they're not in the right state of mind and they're being manipulated way past like I, would, I wouldn't say no return, but way past the point to where, like, you cannot even, like, this isn't reality, and this, is this even written by Dakota? Well, Dakota's parents don't believe that Dakota wrote it. They believe that Ezra wrote it and put it on... Chat, check my Twitter. ...on the Instagram, because... Ezra's currently controlling the Instagram, which would make sense if they control so much. After the parents make this accusation, then, of course, a video comes out where... Dakota's talking and sharing that this is their choice and this is what they have to say. All right. Hi, guys. Hi, folks. Um, I've become aware that some people are saying that my statements were not written by me. I'd like to clarify that they are, in fact, directly from me nobody is controlling my instagram account i don't have a phone right now out of my own personal conviction 
Um, and honestly, it's really distressing that the narrative of the victim in question is not being granted any trust. I worked really hard to make really clear what was going on. And if the statements are too profoundly contrasting to whatever assumptions those of us have garnered and have chosen to carry, I'd like to say that it's nobody's business and that no one is owed a story or an outcome. This is my life, these are my decisions, and I'm disappointed in my parents and the press in every way. I don't even know what the fuck's going on. It's a on. really bizarre video, and I honestly feel so bad for Dakota because it seems like it's grooming, brainwashing, all of that, all of these horrible things, horrible things that they're going through, and like, how, what do we do? I mean, they're running from the law at this point. And keep in mind, Ezra is a working actor. What's gonna happen after all of these allegations? Like, there is another, like, Fantastic Beast movie coming out in 2023, in June 2023. How can they keep the star? They've already shot this film, so they're gonna have to reshoot everything. And it seems like every day there are new allegations out about Ezra. Today, we found out about a- Why are we on the side of her parents and not her? I don't know, because, like- it kind of feels like, uh, you know, this isn't uh, a case of like just a random weird, uh, you know, queer person getting. Um, it doesn't feel like uh, it's a random weird queer person that's like kind of getting fucking uh, a bad rap from the media and more so like a libertarian nightmare, a menace on uh, on society. And that she's uh, a child. One that was also uh, given a fuckload of drugs at an early age. Uh, one that has been groomed since the age of 12. Like, a lot of people use grooming in, like, really weird ways. Like, act like... People act like you could groom, like, a fucking 25-year-old man. You know what I mean? Like, people should be like, oh, that, that was grooming. It's like, no, dude. You're, you're just fucking ridiculous. This is the instance where, like, grooming is the only appropriate term to be used in this instance okay like this is it when motherfuckers are talking about grooming like when republicans talk about grooming like oh it's the uh, disney's grooming our uh, children into being gay like that's not real that's not a real term or when like super woke people on the internet are like oh yeah you uh, groomed me at the age of 34 <laughs> like that's uh, bullshit okay no but this this is the grooming this is the it seems like A 12-year-old granted a protection of order against Ezra. There's not a lot of details here besides the fact that a mother and her 12-year-old child decided to get a an order of protection against Ezra. They're from Massachusetts, and they claim that one evening uh, the actor came to their home and was threatening them and acting inappropriately towards the non-binary youngster, a 12-year-old. Remember, uh, Dakota was groomed at the age of 12, like starting at 12. And it looks like there was the accuser present, their mother, and a neighbor who all saw this go down. There are also text messages that were sent by the mother and the neighbor, as well as photographs that corroborate their accounts of the night so we don't know exactly like what what happened there in detail but it sounds pretty bad and if you're not familiar Ezra has gotten in some other trouble too like throwing a chair at someone getting physical with fans and I have other videos about Ezra you guys can go and check out and learn more but that's what's going on currently with them and I don't even know what to say besides I'm scared for Dakota and I'm sending good vibes and good prayers so let me know what you guys think about this video. Here's my email if you guys have any other video ideas for me. And I'll see you guys in a new one soon. Bye, guys. All right, folks. First of all, I'm running the top of the hour ad break right now, okay? Top of the hour ad break is upon us.